Hello class, my name is Uche Martins. Welcome to physics class. Today we'll be taking the part two of the topic gravitational feed with the theme feed at rest and in motion. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to one, understand solar system and the planets, state Kepler's law, differentiate between artificial and natural satellite. Understand the concept of escape velocity. What is the solar system? The solar system consists of the sun, the planets, comets, asteroids, and other heavenly bodies which orbit, that is, moves around the sun in space. This is a diagram showing what a meteorite looks like. And this, like we said, a solar system consists of the sun and other heavenly bodies and planets that orbit around it. What are planets? Planets are among many bodies and smaller objects that orbit the sun. Like you can see here, this is the sun. These are planets and like many other bodies that orbit the sun. A planet also is a celestial body that what, moves around a clear orbit. You can see this is a clear orbit. This is a particular planet moving around a clear orbit. It has sufficient mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces. It's in orbiting around the sun, this planet moves around the sun in a elliptical shape orbit with the sun at the center. You can see the elliptical shape at which it moves around the sun. The planet from the order of the one closest to the sun are listed below, which we have Mercury, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the planet. The closer the planet is to the sun, the faster its speed of revolution. That is the 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 that is the planet that is closest to the sun, the faster it revolves around it. Like you can see, Mercury, it takes it 88 days to complete one revolution. Venus takes 225 days to complete its revolution. And also, the Earth takes 365 days. The Mars takes 687 days. Jupiter takes 12 years. Saturn takes 29 years, Uranus takes 84 years, and Neptune takes 165 years. You can see the farther it is from the sun, the longer the time to complete its revolution. The planets are divided into the inner and outer planets. The inner planet, which is also referred to as terrestrial planets, these are four smaller planets, which are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, which primarily are composed of rock and metal. The outer planets. The outer planets are also called gas giants. These are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, which are more massive than the inner planet. That means their mass is big, they are bigger than the inner planet. Like we are saying here that Jupiter and Saturn are said to be the largest planet containing hydrogen and helium gas. Now, the solar system. The sun is the basic component of the solar system. It is composed of other smaller objects called asteroids, comets, and meteors. This is an example of an asteroid. It's a rock material that revolves around the solar system. These, these are meteors. They are dust-like rock materials also, 
Why? Comet are uh, eyes like initial. They also revolve around the sun. Now, the sun glows all the time, emitting its own light and heat. It is the only luminous object in the solar system. That means the object that brings out light. Its diameter is 100 times that of the Earth, and it has a large mass, which is about 332,900 times that of the Earth's mass. What is a satellite? A satellite is any object that moves around the Earth or any planetary body in space. There are two kinds of satellites. We have the natural satellite and the artificial satellite. The natural satellites are smaller objects that orbit a planet or any celestial body. Celestial bodies are heavenly bodies in space. Now, what are some of these characteristics of natural satellites? One, they are formed by nature. The most well-known natural satellite is the Earth's moon. This diagram is showing examples of natural satellites that are formed naturally. They are objects that orbit around the planet. Like earlier, we talked about planets, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Uranus. Those are examples of pla uh, planets, and this satellite revolves around them. They are made up of natural materials such as rock, minerals, water, dust, etc. Characteristics of natural satellites. They cannot transmit radio waves, which enables communication to the Earth or with other bodies. That means they don't have the ability to naturally transmit radio waves that aids world communication. Then natural satellites, like planets, are opaque bodies with no light of their own. They also receive heat and light from the sun. The orbital property and composition of natural satellites provide us with information on the origin and evolution of the satellite system. Now, artificial satellite. The artificial satellite is a device placed in orbit around the Earth, Moon, or another planet. Like you can see clearly in this diagram, these are artificial satellites. They are placed in orbit around the Earth and other planets. This is a good as diagram showing what an artificial satellite looks like. Now, let's look at some of these characteristics of artificial satellites. Artificial satellites are man-made. The first, the first artificial satellite was Sputnik 1. Artificial satellites are objects humans propel through the Earth atmosphere in order to orbit around the Earth. They also require electrical power required by an artificial satellite is provided by panels of solar cells and smaller nuclear reactors. Like, look at this diagram carefully. You can see this is what I call a panel of solar cell. This is where it has generated power that enables it to function very well as an artificial satellite. Characteristics of artificial satellite. These are used and controlled by astronomers. The artificial satellite is made out of metal and electronic materials. The artificial satellite do not have advantage like natural satellites, which are normally massive enough to stay in orbit indefinitely. They experience decay of orbit as the Earth's gravity slowly forces its hold on them until they eventually slow down and crash back to Earth. That is to say that they don't have 
enough mass to keep them in orbit that as a result of over time they decay and get spoiled which makes them fall back to earth and crash. The artificial satellite can communicate with instruments that is radio wave on earth. Artificial satellites have many uses including relaying communication signals, making accurate surveys and inventories of the Earth's surface, and weather patterns, weather patterns, weather conditions, and carrying out scientific experiments. Uses of satellites. A satellite in today's world has various applications in many fields. Most satellites serve one or more functions like communication. Satellite helps communication between different planets. People from different parts of the planet can easily communicate with themselves by the use of satellite, that is artificial satellite. Also, navigation, that is direction from one particular location to the other. With the aid of artificial satellite, you can navigate properly. It is mainly used by sailors, people that go on voyage on the sea. Now, weather forecasting, terms of rain, change in cloud, the weather conditions, the satellites also help in getting such information. Environmental monitoring, in terms of environmental hazard, either earthquake or floods, satellites also help also. Atmospheric studies satellites. We have artificial satellites that are specially designed to study the changes in the atmosphere. Also, remote sensing satellite, search and rescue satellite, and space exploration satellites. Satellites that are involved in exploring the space and knowing the content and what the familiar environment in space. Kepler's law. The behavior of the solar system is described by Kepler's law. And this law is divided into three parts. Now let's look at the first law, law one. The planets each travel along an eclipse which with the sun at one focus. Law two, the line joining the sun and the planets sweeps out equal areas in equal times. Law 3. The square of the period of revolution of the planets are proportional to the cubes of their mean distance from the Earth. Let's go back to Law 1. They said the planet travels along an eclipse with the sun at one focus. Look at the eclipse produced and this is the planet and this is the sun. It travels along an ellipse with the sun at one focus. Lotto explains that the line joining the sun and the planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time. This, the line joining the sun and the planet, they sweep out equal areas at equal time that the sweep, this is the sun sweeping out equal an equal area, and this is the planet sweeping out an equal area, all at equal time. Now, the square of the period is directly proportional to the cube of the distance apart. Now, introducing this as a constant, t squared will be equal to 4 pi squared over gm. From earlier, we know that this is uh, Newton's universal gravitational constant, and m happens to be the mass of the planet. Escape velocity. What is escape velocity? Escape velocity is simply the minimum velocity required for any object, each satellite, to escape the gravitational field of any planetary body, e.g., Earth, permanently. Like we said, a gravitational field has to do with the region where a, a gravitational force is being experienced. When a body, that minimum velocity required for a body to escape the influence of that gravitational force is what we call escape velocity. It could be a satellite, 
like seeing this rocket escaping the influence of the gravitational field of the Earth, this is an example of what it means for a body to escape that gravitational influence. Now, escape velocity is different from the velocity a satellite uses to orbit the Earth. The velocity at which a satellite orbits around the Earth is gotten from a centripetal force required to keep the satellite in their orbit, and this is compared with Newton's gravitational force. I would say that this is the body, the velocity required for the body to revolve around this orbit is gotten from comparing the centripetal force required to keep the body around the orbit and also Newton's word gravitational force. Now, equating these two forces, mv squared over r equals to g m m over r squared, where this is our Newton's gravitational force and this is our centripetal force of the body. Now, where this is our centripetal force and this is our Newton's gravitational force. Now, the radius r cancelling radius here will be left with one r and the mass here cancelling one mass here will be left with capital M. From that expression, V squared is now equal to GM over R. V now is now equal to the square root of GM over R, which becomes the velocity of the satellite. Then, escape velocity is obtained using Newton's law of universal gravitation which clearly states mathematically that F is equal to G capital M small m over what? R squared. Where M is the mass of the satellite, big M is the mass of the Earth. Now, the work done in carrying a mass M, which is the mass of the satellite, from the center of the Earth to a distance so great that the gravitational field is negligibly weak is given by W is equal to force times distance arrow. We know that work done is equal to force times distance. Now, and this force is what is our Newton's gravitational force, which is G capital M small m over arrow squared times the distance arrow. At the end, we'll get our work done W to be equal to G capital M small m over arrow. But we have to know that this work done must be equal to the kinetic energy of the body of mass m at this point, considering conservation of work. Now, our kinetic energy, as we know, is equal to half mv squared. Now, we've calculated our work done, which is w, to be equal to g m m over r now from conservation of work or energy it's simply equal that my kinetic energy will be equals to my work done that means my ke is equals to my work done which now make it half mv squared is equals to g m m over r where the mass of this satellite will cancel this mass of this satellite and we'll be left with V squared over two is equal to G M over arrow, making V squared subject of formula, V squared is equal to two G M over arrow. Now, from here, Making V now, subject of formula V will now be equal to the square root of 2G M over R, where M is the mass of the Earth, G is Newton's universal gravitational constant, and R is the radius of the Earth. Escape velocity, this is the force. This is the velocity at which used in revolving around the Earth. Now, recall that our gravitational field strength G 
is equal to what? Gm over R squared. Making Newton's gravitational constant the subject of formula, G becomes G R squared over M. Now, we've calculated that V is equal to the square root of 2GM over R. Putting this for G, it becomes the square root of 2 times G R squared over M times M over the arrow we have here. This arrow go out with R square, we are left with R here. This M striking at M here. So at the end, we have our V, which is our escape velocity, to be equal to the square root of what? 2 G R. Summary. So far, we've discussed solar system. Solar system consists of the sun, planet, and other celestial bodies, which are heavenly bodies that orbit the sun. Planets are among the many bodies and smaller objects that orbit the sun. Satellites are planetary bodies that move around the Earth or any other body in space. We have natural satellites like the moon and artificial stroke man-made satellites. Artificial satellites are used for communication, navigation, and weather forecast. We talked about Kepler's law. Kepler's law, which describes the behavior of solar system, and it states that the planets each travel along an eclipse with the sun at one focus, and the line joining the sun and the planet sweeps equal areas in equal times. Three, the square of the period of revolution of the planets are proportional to the cubes of the mean distances from the sun. That is, t squared is directly proportional to the cube mean distance. We also discuss escape velocity as the minimum velocity for a satellite to leave the influence of a gravitational field permanently. Let's look at some test questions. Calculate the escape velocity of a satellite from the Earth's gravitational influence. Take G to be 9.8 meter per second square and radius of Earth to be 6.4 times 10 raised to power 6. Now let's look at the solution. What are they asking us to find? Escape velocity V. What was given G? as acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meter per second square. They gave the radius of the Earth arrow to be equal to 6.4 times 10 raised to the power 6 meters. From, by formula, we know that escape velocity V is equal to the square root of 2 G arrow. Now, this now shows that my V is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 6.4 times 10 raised to the power 6. Calculating this and looking for the square root, we'll get 11,000 meter per second, which is C as the correct option. Second question. Kepler's law states that the line joining the sun and the planet sweeps at dash. The correct answer to this question is D. Kepler's law states that the line joining the sun and the planet sweeps at equal areas in equal times. I believe at the end of this class, gravitational field potential part two, We've been able to understand what solar system is about, natural and artificial satellite, and also the concept of escape velocity. Thank you very much and see you in the next class.